Welcome to this video on a method of programming the QuickLogic QuickFeather board. QuickLogic's Quark is the first ARM Cortex M4 MCU and EFPGA SOC with 100% open source tooling for both hardware and software. The goal of this video is for you to clone the tiny FPGA application code from the QuickLogic GitHub repository, download the M4 boot code image, the bootloader FPGA, an M4 application code to the QuickFeather board. I will also provide a fix to recover from a brick board using the Sega J-Link debugger. The tiny FPGA USB bootloader is an open source IP for programming FPGAs without extra USB interface chips. It implements a USB virtual serial port to SPI flash bridge on the FPGA fabric itself. The first requirement to use the tiny FPGA is you must be using a version of Python 3 or above. So to check, as you can see in this instance, I'm using 3.7. Inside the tiny FPGA programming application repository, you'll see the readme file that explains that to use the QuickLogic QuickFeather board, you need to look at the Q series readme file. And here you'll find instructions on cloning the repository and installing the tiny FPGA B. So in this instance, all I'm going to do is just copy and paste the commands. And you can see in the explorer window that this tiny FPGA programming application directory has been created. So now that we have installed both the programs required, I'm now going to go through and explain how you actually program down to the QuickFeather board. We now need to put the feather into programming mode. First, press the reset button and then the user define button. And you'll see a slow pulsing green LED. To program the board, we also need to know the COM port setting. So if we go into device manager and the COM, we can see that we're using COM port 40. Inside the tiny FPGA programming folder, we open up a command box. And we're going to run the Python script for the tiny FPGA programming interface. We then need to specify the COM port, which is 40. We're downloading the bootloader and then the location of the binary. We can then download the FPGA boot image. And finally, the M4 application program. Once the board is programmed successfully, we can then reset and reboot the board by pressing the reset button. And you'll see you have a blue pulsing LED. We can then open up a terminal adapter, 
select a COM port, which in this case is 40, and a board rate of 115 200. And then we can see a console and we can type in dialog and, for example, turn the red LED on. So what happens if when you press the reset button and the user define button, you no longer see a slow pulsing green LED? and the tiny FPGA programmer is no longer able to download new firmware to your board. Unfortunately, the bootloader appears to be corrupted. But don't despair, there is a way of resolving this, but you'll need some extra equipment. The first is a J-Link Sega base unit or equivalent. You need to connect two shunts across the jumpers next to the J-Link connector. You'll need to go into the QuickLogic GitHub repository inside the QuickFeather dev board and the binary directory. You'll see the images you need to clone to your local drive to download to the board. As you can see, I've already done this here in this bin directory in the G drive. I'm then going to open up the JLink commander and I'm going to connect to my target. I'm connecting to a Cortex M4 class system using the SWD interface using the default speed. And as you can now see, I have some communication with the M4 Cortex core and getting some register information. I then issue a reset command and then I'm going to load a binary. And I need to put the location of that. Now, the difference between this and some of the things we've done earlier, we are writing using the tiny FPGA programmer to the flash chip. In this instance, we're writing directly to the SRAM on board the EOS device. So we're actually writing to address location 00. We then issue a reset command and then a go. And now you can see we have a slow pulsing green LED. And then we can go back and look at the way of using the tiny FPGA bootloader to download firmware into the system. After you've updated the flash image, if you want to run the code from the flash, you need to remove the two shunts and reset the board. Thank you for watching and if you have any suggestions on future videos then please let us know for either the QuickLogic forum or through the YouTube channel.